Good afternoon and thank you very much for coming to this, the final artist talk on the first day of the exhibition 21st Century Art in the First Decade. My name is Francis Parker, I'm Curator of Contemporary Australian Art here at the, uh, the Gallery of Modern Art and it's my absolute delight to introduce you to Arlo Mountford whose wonderful animation work is behind me. Um, Arlo is one of a number of artists in the exhibition who, whose career has been established within the time frame that the, the exhibition encompasses. Uh, he studied design and multimedia in Western Australia before uh, moving to Melbourne where he studied sculpture at the VCA. And uh, he's really most known for his wonderful animation works which plum uh, his quite encyclopedic knowledge of, of art history. And uh, this particular work behind me is um, actually the second work by Arlo that the gallery has acquired. He was in the 2008 exhibition Contemporary Australia Optimism with uh, a single channel video that was uh, um, a hard edge abstract circle that, um, that spoke. It was called Stand Up and it, uh, the circle gave this wonderful talk. A comedy routine. This obviously is a much, much more complex work, so uh, I shall hand over to Arlo to, uh, to speak to you about it. Thanks, Francis. Um, it's interesting that Goma owns uh, this work and Stand Up. Stand Up was um, a single channel piece uh, and essentially a stand-up routine with this hard-edged uh, circle. Um, and that piece was uh, exhibited at Gertrude Contemporary Art Spaces in Melbourne in 2007 and almost a month after that show I started um, work on this piece. Um, and I think that work was uh, almost a a kind of tongue-in-cheek manifesto for um, art making, I guess. And um, I think at the point I was really, uh, I, well, I was, I think, four or five years out of art school and so uh, art school scepticism was slowly disappearing and I was getting um, more and more interested in art. <laughs> and, um, and this, these were these original paintings um, were paintings I'd grown up with. Um, well, Bruegel's work in particular, I'd kind of grown up with as something that um, my grandmother uh, had prints, and they were on biscuit tins and stuff like that. So I knew his work quite early on, and book covers. They ended up in all sorts of places, and they seemed really. Um, uh, almost uh, images indicative of a European um, mythology, I guess, that um, uh, maybe living in Australia we um, think about. Um, and so this work, uh, drawing this work was, was nothing like I'd have any other work I'd done before. And, um, it really was a homage to that idea, um, and uh, the first, the first animation was um, Hunters in the Snow, and it was really, um, I really just liked snow. I think um, I can't remember. I don't think I'd only seen snow once before when I started this, and um, well, apart from when I was very young, but. Um, yeah, and so then I travelled to Europe the following year and saw snow. But um, it was, um, yeah, a long-term piece. I didn't finish it until 2009. Um, I chose the three paintings uh, almost as a, um, I guess, a seasonal transition. Um, these two works were initially intended as um, uh, calendar pieces. They represented the, um, 
uh, seasons. Um, I can't remember who it was. They were painted by Bruegel for a, a particular nobleman. I can't quite remember who. But um, and what I loved about the final piece was that it was um, the fall of Icarus. The whole idea that Icarus is just a uh, very small aspect to the um, painting. And uh, I don't know if you can really tell, but here there's actually a, um, a dead, dead person in the bushes. And um, that came from the uh, idea that the plough um, didn't stop even for the dead. There was actually a saying. And so I deliberately um, kind of reversed that idea, I guess, by having the ploughman stop and eat an apple and kind of take in uh, the scenery. Um, yeah. Perhaps um, if I could jump in with a, yep. a question. Um, maybe if you'd like to talk about the process of, of working with, with still images and bringing them to life. And ah, yeah. Yeah, that is interesting um, because the images are obviously two-dimensional and so bringing them to life almost makes them um, quite ridiculous almost because I have to, you, I use what information is in the two-dimensional image to then kind of clunkily animate it into some kind of uh, life. But it was important to um, not, to, to, to leave the actions um, that I kind of imagined were taking place, not to include any sensationalism or anything like that. Um, and then, but what, I worked with a sound designer, Robert Stewart, and it was really important to then put an extremely um, realistic soundtrack in, so that you get this weird space between the two-dimensional jerky animation and the ultra-realistic soundtrack. And, um, so the 2D really becomes almost a symbol for an action rather than an accurate depiction of the action. Um, and, and the character of the, the animation also simplifies the images quite a lot as well. Yeah. It, even though these are much, much more complex than, than some of your other yeah, animation that's true. works. Which, um, which mostly feature uh, stick figures who get up to all sorts of yeah. antics. <laughs> it's um, actually... Um, Sorry to no. talk, but there is actually a, a stick figure who makes an appearance right at the I very guess. end in, in place of Icarus. Um, which, um, yeah, it's, that was an, an acknowledgement to um, my own work. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I kind of really felt that making this work that everyone was going to wonder what direction I was heading in. and. Um, so it was almost like a, uh, a look, it's okay, here's the stick figure that you're expecting. Um, and that's why I made it so quick and most people miss it the first time, which is nice. Um, yeah. Mm. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just intrigued by yep. the birds that apparently transcend space and time. Ah, and yes, and yes, they do. Um, yeah, there was a lot to do with composition. And for example, the corn harvest I flipped, so you'd have these lines running from um, left to right, or right to left. And um, it was a kind of an interesting space where you had, um, at some point, characters disappear in the lines between the images. And so I kind of just like this idea that maybe the birds could fly through all three. Um, yeah. The, the sound is, is off at the moment, obviously, but if, uh, if you don't time to yourself and you to come back and listen to the work, you'll, you'll hear that the, the, the sound follows the action from left to right across yes. the screens, which, um, which is the direction of that spot. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, that just happens to be the way I animated it. <laughs> I didn't think about it. Um, yeah, the idea is that there's approximately three minutes per painting, and so the sound is what um, uh, 
draws the viewer across the three images, one after the other. And although we, we can't hear it at the moment, but it might be interesting if you talk a little bit about the, the, the woman who speaks ah, in yes. the middle panel and the two texts that she uh, yeah. is now reciting. She's reciting um, an excerpt from a book uh, called Eyeless in Gaza um, by Aldous Huxley. And it was published um, between the world wars. And um, I was just reading it whilst I was animating. And there was this, this one line of oh, excerpt which um, proposes a, an existence as a higher lifer, which is um, never really commits to anything and just lives in their mind and, and um, you know, is ex completely academic and has great ideas and never has to commit them, which keeps them free from um, doing anything. Um, but in a, in a, not in a cynical way, in a really optimistic kind of way. And um, I liked that idea. I really didn't have a, um, a uh, message or, or something that I really wanted to um, convey with this work. I really wanted to just... Well, it's, it's uh, a folly. I, yeah. I neglected to mention the, the title of in my introduction, but the work is called The Folly. And yeah, that's, and that's really very much the intention, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a it's an idea. That's what it is. It doesn't um, uh, it doesn't need to engage you beyond what it is. If that makes sense. Um. But at the same time, <laughs> it's it's incredibly rich in all its uh, yeah. references. Yes. Um, yeah. Perhaps if there are some questions from the from the floor. Sorry if I missed uh, you talking about this uh, at the beginning of your talk there, but um, could you talk a bit about the uh, experience of seeing animation in the gallery context? Uh, just, it's not ah. perhaps the most usual place to see animation. Sure. Um, yeah, I, although I studied uh, sculpture um, at art school, literally the first year out of art school, I. Um, started using animations as a uh, like a, a an instructive tool on how to interpret my sculptures um, and like I, I, I didn't re I never really thought about them as um being strange for a gallery context I just kind of uh, Used them because I, 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 instead of being an instruction booklet, they were just an animation that animated uh, some stick figures that um, uh, interacted and dealt with a work that I'd built. Um, and then at some point, I stopped making the sculptures and just made the animations. Um, I think it's. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to say about animations in galleries. I don't really think about it. Um, I think, in particular, this work, it's really great to see it in the museum because it deals with a particular um, uh, art history, which, so it's nice to see them shown in that context. But I don't... Um, yeah, I don't. And, and in this context too, there's a lovely relationship with the, the young Sturbach work that you can just hear yeah. uh, behind the, the wall where the uh, where a print of Hunters in the Snow is actually on the wall in, in the, the room where the, the video work starts and then they move out into, into a summer landscape, quite a deliberate mm. reference. So it's lovely to have that relationship with, with this work. Uh, any other questions? I'm just intrigued by use of the word folly. I yeah. remember seeing many in Europe, and generally speaking, they enshrine a romantic view of the past. They've got imitation yeah. and all that sort yeah. of thing. Um, a lot of them were quite elaborate. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them were done because the person who created them, because they could. 
Yeah. Does any of that resonate? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I really, uh, like I was saying, when I started drawing this work, I didn't really, um, it was unlike any of my other works in the sense that I hadn't laid it out. Nothing was storyboarded. I just started drawing it. And, um, you know, but it took two years. So at some point I started to wonder what, what I was doing. And, um, and whilst travelling in Europe, we visited follies and stuff like that. And so I kind of thought, well, this is a folly. This is it's what it is. Um, and that, yeah, so that was a very direct reference. Um, hmm. I was intrigued by you saying that you didn't like the landscape, yet you chose to draw it. Why, why did you choose it? Oh, no, I did like the landscape. Yeah, but you said in the beginning that you had some difficulties with it, or you'd never seen snow, and so ah, you right. don't really like it as such. No, I, I think what I, um, I think I had a nostalgia, well, not a, a kind of, not a nostalgia, but a sentimentality for that landscape that I hadn't actually engaged with at any point. Um, and I think that's what drew me to drawing the image to begin with. Um, and so your trip to your past Yeah, it's... Got rid of yeah, the nostalgia? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> I've made other films in the snow as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's really weird to make films in the snow in Australia, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the snow like a blank page in some ways? Yeah, possibly, but I think it's also... Um, I think it's really kind of elemental. It's kind of... You know, you have to deal with it. Um, literally, just walking through it, I guess that's... No, maybe it's a blanket, but... Well, it's, uh, a lot of the other works have a white ground. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah. 